G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I want to talk about remote ID. Love it or hate it, it is a fact of life if you live in the USA. And as of September this year, you're going to have to have some kind of remote ID on your models if they weigh more than 250 grams, if they're being flown outside of a freer, or if you're flying under a Part 107. So that means a lot of people are going to have to spend a lot of money buying remote ID broadcast modules for their model aircraft and their drones, their legacy drones. Now, if you're buying a store-bought drone like a DJI, a Varta or a Mavic, and it was made after the 16th of September last year, then it should auto automatically have remote ID working now with the latest software updates. And that's standard remote ID. Broadcast remote ID, it's a little bit different. It doesn't broadcast quite as much information, but it is still going to be totally compulsory, no options, unless you want to be non-compliant. But we're not going to go there because this is RC Model Reviews. We're going to talk about being compliant. Right, so the only really viable solution I've seen on the market today is the one from DroneTag. And it's called the Drone Tag BS, basic solution, or you could say it meant something else. Oh, I'm not going there. Anyway, it says it's the most affordable remote ID solution for all aero modelers, FPV pilots, and hobbyists in order to comply with the new FAA standards, right? So this is designed specifically at the US market. Now, uh, we're going to take a look because if we go to the eShop, they say you can get Drone Tag BS on our eShop on May 22nd, 2023 for a one-time price. A one-time price of $49. So 50 bucks. Let's say 50 bucks. Only on that one day. And it's a special offer. And I think it's also quantity limited. You can only buy three at that price, I think. So let's go to the eShop and take a look. Where we go. There we go. So they have these other ones, $300, because the euro is about the same as a dollar. $300, $200. So the US one here, Drone Tag BS, just 50 bucks. So let's have a look at it, see what it says. Here we go, Drone Tag BS, tax excluded. And uh, it says again, the special price of $49 applies only to orders placed on the 22nd of May. So you've got to you know, choose your time. <laughs> and the official price will then start at $89. And the number of pieces is limited to three per customer. The delivery will be managed, I guess that means you get it sent by the end of July 2023 and plenty of time to fit it to your model and be compliant on the 16th of September. Now the interesting thing is that this this $50 price is exactly what the FAA said these things should cost. So let's let's go and have a look at where the FAA said that. This is the FAA's final rule on remote ID and it says here the FAA determines the cost of a broadcast module to be $50 footnote 54. And Filt Note 54 says the FAA received company proprietary information from potential US manufacturers of a broadcast module that may meet remote identification requirements. One US manufacturer estimated a cost of $50 for a self-contained module with its own power and GPS, with a decrease in cost as volume increases. Another manufacturer stated estimate would not be available until the final requirements were published. Commercially available modules that comply with French remote ID laws range from €40 Euros to 47 what well, yeah and up 47 dollars so it's 50 bucks everyone saying it's 50 dollars but note here this one u.s manufacturer estimated a cost for a self-contained module with its own power and gps right so let's see how that compares with the offering from drone tag here's the drone tag unit it doesn't have its own power it, it requires that you plug it into the power system on your on your drone or your model aircraft that's what these connectors here these connectors here uh, for power and also for data. One of the, the bonus features of this unit though, I should because I've spoken to the guy who has been developing this, is that the GPS can be used as a GPS for your flight controller. So if you need a if you've got a flight controller and you want GPS capabilities, you can use this. Instead of going and buying a GPS module, you could buy this and it would double as remote ID and GPS information source. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yep, okay. So let's go back to the page here because there's a few gotchas here. Now, 50 bucks, that's what the FAA said. But mind you, this is 50 bucks without a built-in power source. So that's not fully autonomous. This thing does not operate on its own. You can't just stick it on the side of your model and away you go. You've got to wire it in. You've got to wire it into the power system on your model, which means that... If we're going to look at how easy this is to transfer, because one of the things that has been said time and time again is you don't need to buy a remote ID module for every module. You just move it from model to model as you fly them. Is that going to be practical? Well, for a start, you're going to have to have matching connectors on all your models. So you can actually plug in the power feed to the 
module that we're buying here, the, the broadcast module. And then there's something else. Let's have a look here. It doesn't have any antennas. If we look, as if we look at this picture, it's got a couple of UFL connectors here. So you have to plug in your antennas. I think it says here, um, yeah, external Bluetooth and positioning, that's GPS antennas, are not included. You may use your own antennas or you can buy one of these. Now, obviously the best solution is a, is a combined antenna, one that does both. So they have a combined Bluetooth and GPS positioning antenna. Let's have a look at that. Here we are. It's another 10 bucks. So suddenly 50 bucks is 60 bucks. And remember, there's no built-in battery. Now, if we look at that, let's take a look at this image here because I want to get some indication of size. Now, it says here that the leads are 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters. See, it says down here, cable length 10 centimeters. So if we look at this picture, that distance from there to there is roughly the same as there to there. So it's probably about a 95, 100 millimeters across. That's quite a big antenna. Perhaps not so big for a fixed wing, but even on a small foam model of a Piper Cub, 250 gram model of a Piper Cub, it is going to be quite a big antenna. But on a quad, on a on a three and a half or a five inch quad, it's going to be hard to find a place to put that antenna, isn't it? That's not going to be in the way. And also that's going to be um, useful. So, and the other, my other concern is these connectors here, these, these UFL connectors, which are, let's just go back to the uh, original uh, thing here. Let's go back to the original thing. These UFL connectors, if you're going to transfer this module from model to model, it's going to be a problem because UFL connectors are not designed for constant use. They're designed for manufacturing. You know, you, you make a board, you have a separate antenna, and then at some point in the production process, you connect the antenna to the board using the UFL connector. It's a one-time connection. If you look at the data sheets for these connectors, often they are limited to 20 or 30 insertion cycles. That means that after you've plugged it and unplugged it 20 or 30 times, they don't guarantee they're going to work anymore. And if you've ever had to fiddle around with micro or UFL connectors, you'll know they're very easy to mess up, very easy to break. So you're not going to be moving this module around from model to model. It means if, if you're going to have five models and you want broadcast remote ID on five models, you will need five of these. You're not going to be able to transfer it easily because another thing that's worth noting is if we, there are, there are smaller antennas. We look at this, um, what does it say on here? Let's have a look. Does it say how you're supposed to... Oh, that's the wrong one, isn't it? No, this will do. We'll use this one. This is the just the GPS antenna. It says, um, where are we? Mounting adhesive. So you're supposed to glue this to your model, which means you're not going to unglue it and move that with the module, are you? So you're, at the very least, you'll need antennas on every model. So yeah, your price is, is getting up there. It's quite high. And if we look at this antenna, it's not a patch. It's not a patch. So it's not going to have the same gain as a patch antenna. Most GPS receivers have a little ceramic patch, which means they get a bit of gain because GPS signals are quite weak. They come from, you know, something's about a 20 watt transmitter in a GPS satellite that is hundreds of kilometers above our heads and quite often at low angles so that there's, there's a lot of atmosphere to pass through. So you need a pretty good antenna. And I don't know that this is going to be good enough. It may be good enough for the purposes of the remote ID, but will it be good enough if you're also going to use that GPS receiver as your uh, GPS, primary GPS for your flight controller. I think that that GPS, you know, being able to use your remote ID as a GPS source may not pan out as well as we might hope because this antenna is probably going to be a little bit lacking in that department. But only time will tell there. So there we go. Um, yeah. Now, it's worth noting, you may think, oh, but I'm an FAA member. Oh, sorry, AMA member. I don't have to worry. We're going to be flying in free as well. It may not work out that way. From what we've seen to date, the FAA is taking a very long time to process the freer applications. And there's there's going to be, what is it, 2,500 alone just for the AMA? So the chances that all the freers that have been requested will be approved by the 16th of September is very, very low. And that means if you're in an AMA club and your field hasn't been granted freer status, if you want to keep flying, you're going to have to go out and buy these GPS, or this, these remote ID modules. You're going to have to spend the money to put one of these on every one of your models because you're not going to easily be able to move it from one to the other. So that's if you've got five models you want to take out on a weekend, that's going to be a lot of money. And remember, this is an introductory price. This is $50 introductory. So it's $50 plus $10 for an antenna, $60, $60. And I don't know, you must get those connectors included, I suppose. If not, that would be more money. So... $60 a model, but after, or if you're not buying on May 22nd, goes up to $90 plus the $10 for the antenna. So that's $100 per model. 100 that's twice, exactly twice what the FAA thought it was going to cost. 
So they're saying this isn't an unreasonable burden on model flies. It's only $50 a model. Well, no, it's actually twice that now. So it's $100. You've got five models you want to fly regularly, $500 in remote ID equipment to put on those models. And this is the cheapest option on the market right now. So yeah, it's interesting. Now, I don't have one of these. I'd really love to have a look at one uh, from Drone Tech. If they want to send me one, I will review it because even though personally I'm quite opposed to remote ID, as a reviewer, I know a lot of people are going to need to buy a remote ID module and I would like to get one, test it, try it out, see just how well it works, see how good that antenna is as a source for GPS information for your flight controller for your flight navigation system as opposed to just the remote ID system. If Drone Tag want to send me one, I'll gladly review it with my usual open mind and total objectivity. So there you go. But I, I thought I'd highlight this because it was announced just this week. And I did speak to the one of the guys developing it on the Drone and Sundry live stream. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to go there. And while I was talking to the developer, he mentioned that th this $49 price is almost below cost. So we're not going to expect to see anything this cheap on the market unless people want to make a loss. This is an introductory offer. They're not making a profit out of these on the day. So it doesn't matter who's making it. The odds are that these things are going to be costing about 100 bucks per model. Um, and it is something that everybody in the USA should be looking at. Uh, whether you intend to comply or not, you need to know what's there. You need to know what the costs are. And there you go. That's it. Thank you for watching. And I thank you, I thank my Patreon supporters for making it possible for me to do this. More videos in the pipeline, more coming, and hopefully next time a bit more exciting than a talking head and a web page. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. Bye for now.